Hey guys, today I'm here at the Central Laser Facility just south of Oxford to look at some really, really big, fancy, powerful lasers. And I'm here with a laser scientist. Would that be an accurate description? Yes. Right, so who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm Dr. Kerry Brenner and I lead the industry partnerships and innovation group that we have here in the Central Laser Facility. By background, I'm a laser plasma physicist. So I use the most powerful lasers in the world, two of which we have here. I use those big powerful lasers to focus down onto small pieces of material that they are then very rapidly heated to millions of degrees in half a trillionth of a second, transforming that material into an exotic fourth state of matter that we call plasma. Mm -hmm. And so that's the bit I study. I like that really high temperature particle mix created by a high powered laser. Therefore, I'm a laser plasma physicist. Um, and I, over the years, have started to learn how what this does, what happens next when you, when you shoot things with a laser and I study the things that come out. So I study the high energy particles and the x-rays that are thrown out from this colossal extreme interaction. And we've realized in the last five or six years actually that the beams that come out can be used for lots of different applications. Um, one of those is for doing X-ray imaging of very large, bulky or dense metals. And so I've been engaging with companies that work in different sectors like the aerospace sector or the newly, nuclear sector. And they manufacture parts that are made out of steel, tungsten, nickel. They are really dense materials that are very hard to see through. But the laser x-rays that I make can see through these pretty easily. Um, so we've been partnering up with these companies and these industries and asking them, do you want to come and use these x-rays? They're really excellent. <laughs> and uh, they said yes. Uh, so so we, we work with these companies um, if they want to apply the technology that we have. Um, and more broadly, in the department I work, we have loads of different uses for our lasers. They can be used to see inside cells or to study chemistry or chemicals and drugs and the surface of materials and catalysts and other plastics. And there's basically a whole range of things that we can do. And the group that I lead um, does all those types of applications. So we have um, chemists and biologists working with us as well as physicists and we all team up with different companies um, whenever they want to come and use these um, lasers and uh, we look after those projects so they come in they'll use the lasers take their data that might help them understand their product or their new technology and then they go back and hopefully it makes a difference. Um, and, uh, and so that's the kind of thing that I, I look after. That's great. So you're very into science. Did you like science in school? I assume that you did. I liked uh, physics and chemistry. Um, Not biology. Well, I didn't, I didn't mind it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. It um, smells, doesn't it, let's be honest. <laughs> actually, I, I actually just found it, there was too many words to remember. Um, I, it was just, I, my memory wasn't good enough um, and I couldn't spell half of the things either. So I found that really hard. Um, I did uh, the triple science GCSE option um, and in my school, um, in the town that I grew up in, actually my school was the only one that did triple science GCSE. So I was very um, kind of early on, I was able to say, okay, that's my biology class, that's my chemistry class, and that's my physics, physics class. And it was the physics and chemistry that I enjoyed by far the most. So those who were too focused on and kind of like just ignored Yeah, so at A level, happening. yeah, I was like, no, not doing, not doing biology. Um, and I started off doing um, physics, chemistry, economics, and maths at A level, actually. Mm -hmm. And then during my first year, um, a level chemistry. I then just didn't like chemistry anymore. <laughs> Again, too many. I know. I'm gonna sorry. cry. <laughs> I, I, I was too many. Um, 
too many things to remember. I, I was all of the different names for things and the way you have to draw all the chemicals. That's and literally symbols. my favorite thing in the whole entire world. Yeah. See, that's we make a good team. You can do that <laughs> bit and I'll, I'll do the not having to remember things bit. Um, so I dropped the, the chemistry after the first year and then did half an A-level in further maths. And are you going to share what your exam results were? Everyone loves a little bit of a, a juicy insight into other people's exam results. Um, uh, sure, I'm going to have to try remember now. Um, back to GCSE, so I got four A stars and the rest A's. And I'm trying to remember what my A stars were in. I think they were physics, English literature, chemistry, and history. I think very I also did GCSE drama and I think I think I, I don't think I got an A star in that but <laughs> and for A level um I got all A's at um A level um very impressive much better than what I did <laughs> I was well I have, I have to say that it was um that was after the two years um, and when when I was doing my A levels we did the exams in the first year we did AS levels and then A levels and my AS levels, I I got um, A's for those apart from the economics. I got a C in my first year. And um, yeah, that was quite a surprise. But then uh, economics is really hard. It's yes. the first time I've studied that. And it was, I have to say, it's one of, one of the, the toughest A levels I did was economics. Um, so I had to get my head down in the second year. I actually retook one of the exams and re redid that again and then um, tried very hard. and turned it around into an A. And then after that, university? So after that, I went straight to, um, to do physics at University of Oxford um, and did a three year um, physics degree. So how did you decide where you wanted to go to university? Uh, that's a good question because I didn't even know where to begin with universities. Um, I visited a few of the towns that, that I thought I might want to live in. Actually, that was one of the things, how I decided where do I want to go to, because most universities do physics. Mm. So for me, it wasn't, you know, where do I need to find the specific course? Nearly all universities do physics now. Um, it was actually, where do I want to live and where do I want to move? I grew up in Shropshire, um, in a, the county town, Shrewsbury, um, but the, the whole area is quite rural and small. So wasn't used to kind of city living, but I thought I'd, I'd try that out. So I went and looked at Manchester, Nottingham, Leeds, uh, down in London, and then um, and then Oxford as well. I did want to apply to either Oxford or Cambridge. It was it was told at that you know my my grades w would be good enough to go. And um, between the two, um, I wanted to go for Oxford because I wasn't interested in the natural sciences. I knew I just wanted to do. Um, physics if I was going to do um, the sciences um, so that was it really yeah right. so it's just where I wanted to live that was kind of not too far away from home but far enough that you know I'd know I'd definitely moved away yeah um, picking or going to visit university towns and picking where you feel comfortable is great advice I wanted to be like about a few hours away from home so mm. enough that I could get home quickly if something went wrong but not enough so my parents would come visit me like every weekend <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in the end, I chose Bath because I walked out of the biochemistry building, which is what I did. And they've got an amphitheater next to the lake. And there were lots of people sitting down drinking beer. And I'm kind of like, yep, fairly sure I'm going to fit in here quite well. And that's where I went. And that's literally how I chose my university. So you are in charge of your department. You're in charge mm. of quite a lot of people. Is there quite a lot of pressure with that? Uh, yes. There is. Um, yeah, if you're in a position of, of leadership, you have a team that um, you're there to make sure that the team can work as best as they can work. And they also look up to you as well. It's a um, it's a position that requires, you know, you have to take responsibility for your decisions and for how you decide how the budget is going to be spent, how you decide how um, how people are going, you're going to handle their their workload and deliver, you know, you have, I'll have objectives that I have to meet, I have to report on what we do and the outcomes of the work that we do. 
So it becomes quite a multi-tasking uh, yeah. job, um, um, which I'm really enjoying. Um, but I think that's what's nice, particularly, is that it's still I still require to have a technical, strong technical background and a strong physics knowledge because that enables me to do my job even better because I can understand how you know not all of the things that we do in the department I can't understand it all but to a, to a really good level I can understand how the techniques need to be run and how if we do any experiments how that's going to work. Well you obviously really enjoy what you do what mm. is the most fun thing about your job? Gosh um, I don't know actually what if there's anything specific yeah just I think, what, what is the if, if you've got that on your schedule you're thinking oh yes today's going to be a good day what's the best thing well actually like today is a pretty good day <laughs> I mean like like having you guys in but um, like this afternoon um, flying out to Prague for a workshop tomorrow and Wednesday okay. um, at a big lace facility um, that we partner with quite closely and I really enjoy workshops and conferences actually I like getting together and talking about different techniques talking about different ways that we can run experiments or collaborations um, I do really enjoy that actually and this time next week I'll be in Hyderabad in India to do something very similar with a new collaboration that we have with a team out out there so that's really good so um, do you get to travel a lot? It sounds like yeah, you do. Yeah, I do, actually. I um, really enjoy that, actually, yeah. Um, I've been to some really amazing places in the last few years um, with, my, with my job all over the world. Um, where's the best one, best place you've been with all that? Uh, Japan. Yeah, it's favourite. And I'm going back there in... When am I going there? I have to remember. I'm going in May. No, that's wrong. In May, I'm going to California. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a laser conference in California in May, and then beginning of June, I'll be in Japan. Lovely. So, yeah. So good. what's the worst thing about your job? What is the bit that you really, really don't like doing? Paperwork is what most well, people Well, yeah, yeah, I think for the specific for mine, which is, and this is the, and this is the world, I, I, I find this difficult because it's not something I'm expert in as well is um, contract negotiations. So when you're working with companies, you're working in innovation. Um, innovation is where you're applying new ideas or knowledge to make a process or a product better. It's normally in the realm of what we call commercialization. So where you're turning some research into a real technology that can be bought and sold in the market. And when you enter that world, it's quite different from research and science and academia um, because then people start talking about non-disclosure agreements, intellectual property, patenting. Um, you have contracts between different entities. Everyone has to sign a legal document to say this is I'm going to do this part of the job and you're going to do that part of the job. And I think at that point when when you're involving contracts and that's quite complicated. But fortunately, we have a whole department here of, of a legal team who are there to advise it. Um, I, I just have got to um, negotiate and initiate that process. Um, and that can be a bit drawn out because that's standard paperwork. When I was at school, I always considered myself to be really lucky because I knew exactly what I wanted to do, which wasn't actually being a YouTuber because that didn't exist when I was in school. I wanted to go into cancer research and I did straight after school. Did you always have for yourself a clear career path set out in mind? No, absolutely not, actually. And I, I, I'm really, I'm always really surprised that I ended up where I am now because I, I would have never thought at school that I would have done a PhD, never thought that I would go into research. I didn't really know what the job of a physicist or a scientist was, um, uh, where I grew up, that we know there weren't any there weren't any universities um, nearby. Um, didn't grow up knowing anyone's parents who were scientists. Um, so I've kind of found found the way, um, and that's actually one of the reasons why I stayed studying sciences beyond GCSE, A level, and then degree was to kind of give keep my options open because I, I thought there was going to be this glorious moment <laughs> when it would all just become very clear and I said yes that's what I'm going to do. Um, it never really happened and, and it's just I've, I've taken opportunities as they come and as, as they opened up to me and it's been really nice that I've have worked, found myself 
in a role that actually involves all the different things. I, I like talking to people. I like telling people what we do with these sites. I like presenting to people. I like um, starting new projects. I like the idea of innovation. I you know, I love the idea that you can understand something on a really fundamental level, but then you apply that to make a genuine difference to the world. And that, that I find really pleasing. And I think I've, I've realized that that's the kind of scientist or um, engineer, actually, that, that that's a very engineering type mindset. And I think that's, that's probably what, what I am. Yeah. So I, I, I call myself an innovator and a physicist now. And, and that's, that's, that's pretty much what, what I, you know, what it is. And so yeah, I kind of I've worked it out along the way. It's been, yeah, a very extended period of work experience. <laughs> so when you were at school, what did you want to be? Um, well, I, again, I wasn't very clear. I tried lots of different um, options and thought that I could lead lots of things. But I really, in, at that time, I was actually training quite hard um, to go into musical theatre. So I grown up doing ballet from I was just small. I was doing quite professional level exams at the same time as doing A level exams. Um, I was auditioning for musical theatre colleges and I actually got into one of them in London at the same time as getting my offer letter through to Oxford. So it was all big decisions um, and I decided to go to university um, first and carry on with performance and, and so on. Um, didn't end up on the stage, on the big stage, but, but actually I think I've still brought a lot of that aspect with me in what I do now in um, being able to talk um, in front of big audiences, um, um, being able to, to perform in a way to, to make what I do entertaining and enticing and inspiring um, and whether my audience is kind of GCSE level 16 year olds or whether that audience is a group of company executives who I'm trying to, you know, um, engage with the work that we do here. Um, all those different audiences need different types of presentation skills that I've managed to acquire over the years. But I think a lot of it I had from, from days of learning how to perform and engage with an audience. That's great. Thank you very much for talking to us. If you want to see more work, um, we're going to go on a tour of the lab. If you want more information about Central Leeds facility, about work experience or spending or something here, then links will be in the description down below.